Here's one th- for you. The other day, mate, when we were speaking about 100 years of Selhurst Park. Yes. I, I like the story you told when you, you looked at Selhurst Park when you were a kid yeah. and um, all eyes on the place. Your dad played for them. The stadium and the club mean a lot to you, but the stadium means a lot because of the memories yeah. that it's thrown up as far as you're concerned still over the, the best, years. Still, in an ideal world, you still want the best version of it if you can get it. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. I mean, we hear that Chelsea are currently in discussions over renovating Stamford Bridge yeah. or potentially moving to Ells Court. Manchester yeah. United, they're engaged in their own stadium project. Yeah. Uh, goodness knows they've got a lot. They've got a lot to do there. Um, is it impossible to keep the stadium with, with the heart and soul that it's always had in this era of mega? modern multi-purpose stadiums the reason I ask the aforementioned John Texter yeah. the man who's trying to get his hands on uh, Everton uh, of course uh, big shareholder in Crystal Palace Texter surprised us and he says I don't like Tottenham I go into that stadium <laughs> and I think it's too nice I remember the first couple of games I went to there and the people I was with were like in this banquet hall and I thought this isn't football and I really believe that it's way too nice a stadium for football. Now, I suppose when you think of the old White Hart Lane, yeah, yeah that that had character. that had character all its own. If he gets to to Everton, he's going to be in Goodison for a short spell of time, and that's good character. But then they move, and then he's going to get a new stadium that might be too nice. Right. I mean, look, it's ironic, isn't it, that an American talks about the nature of what a football stadium should embrace and encompass when I've been to American football games and it's all about entertainment it's like going to a kid's birthday party <laughs> in terms of jeopardy and competitivity and energy inside stadiums so I do think there's a sense of irony in that I think the balance is is that whilst we love to tip our hat to what we grew up with most football fans expect environments that are very much in keeping with the modern day way of living in this world. They expect toilets they can go to. They expect food and banqueting environments. Yeah. They expect digital access into football stadiums so they can get in quick and get out quick. They expect all the concourses to be fully geared and enabled with the right retail presence, the right food presences. And all that comes with an infrastructure that's been built in stadiums that are 100 years old. Mm. It doesn't work. I, I don't know what Tottenham Hotspur fans think, but my... My takeaway when I went to, and it's not because Daniel's my friend, but my takeaway was when I went to, when I went to Tottenham was your bleeding underground car park is nicer than Sellers Park um, <laughs> in terms of its structure, build and quality. So you're quite envious when you look at it. No, I'm not it. envious. I've never been envious of anything. I'm quite admiring well, admired it. Yeah. I admired it. It's, I mean, and, it, and you, you've got this ridiculous wall of sound that they sort of emulated from the British Dortmund uh, uh, build out in terms of the stadium. I think most football clubs fans are excited and feel that it's the evolution of a football club when they start to build new stadiums and build purpose-built stadiums that are equipped to be able to house the modern-day incarnation of football. So when when I grew up, you know, standing at the end of the Homesdale, watching, being able to sit, stand at the back and end up at the front when the goal gets scored because of the surges and all that, that's all been outlawed yeah. by health and safety. The Taylor report rightly came in and reported on the conditions of stadiums. It comes now with a challenge because dynamic stadium movement might not be as advantageous as people thought it was once upon a time and standing coming back into vogue and football clubs are looking to be able to accommodate standing mentalities. Mm. But I think it's now an expectation. It's a badge of honour. It's part and parcel of the territory of modern day football that people want to have stadiums that have a tip and a remembrance towards the heritage of the football club but reflect the forward thinking Ronaldo's talking about it in his last people will say Ronaldo's got substance and 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 ultimately should be listened to he's talking about the need for reinvestment in the stadium or modernized stadium and all that goes around with it and the training grounds need to be up to a certain level and so on and so forth so i think it's absolutely a fundamental and it's also because of the economics of football now whether the people like it or they don't like it, it's just a simple reality that football stadiums have to be utilised for more than just opening the door once every two weeks. Exactly. Have you, he, he, he text to refers to this banquet hall that they were in at Tottenham. You, where, where does Daniel take you when you? Yeah, no, I've been there. I've been, I've been there with Rob Segel, the, the, you know, the football oh, agent. Yeah. That has his own box there, and they've got their own. Yeah, they've got. It's magnificent. They, well, I have to say, it is, and so was, so was, so is the Emirates. Yeah. Yes. You know, I yeah. mean, I, 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 it was wonderful going up to Liverpool when Palace played Liverpool a few times. When you go into their boardroom, they've got a chandelier that reaches the floor, about <laughs> two foot tall. Right. You know, it's a famous environment that Liverpool trade on. Yeah. But I think there's something to be said about moving forward and embracing what's required in today's Very modern Very much age. so. I mean, I think, uh, do you agree that people can be too gooey-eyed over the older stadium 
the, I think, in, in this country. I think you'll never be able to please certain people. They'll be the first people to say they want the tradition, but ultimately they don't like the facilities. Yeah. I'm queuing up to go to the toilet, I need more toilets. OK, well, I'm, there's not enough food and banqueting environments. I can't get this, I can't get that, I can't get the other. And to some extent, people want everything. And there's only so much you can give people if you've got an existing footprint mm. or an existing uh, sh- chassis or structure that doesn't enable itself. I mean, but they went crazy, didn't they, the West Ham fans, when they left the Berlin? Yes. The team's better now, there's less noise. Yeah, yeah, true. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.